Hello, in this video, I will be importing animatronic models and showing you a materials system for these models. Here is some example images, I will focus on animatronics head rotation. Here is another image of toying with animatronic eyes to get shots like these creepy eyes. So first, we should create a models folder and animatronics folder. In here, make a folder for your first animatronic. I will import Bonnie for this tutorial. If you have a model, nice. If not, find one online. I just used ones online. Comment below if you need to find some. Just drag and drop the FBX files into the folder. In here, the settings should stay the same. Make sure it's a skeletal mesh. Import all afterwards. Import the textures as well. Now if you have similar models, it's best to check their textures, if they have a similar pattern of how their textures work, then it is best to create a master material. In the materials folder, create an animatronics folder here too. Right click, create material, and name it M underscore master animatronic. Open it up, press T on this graph to create texture samples, you will then need to right click them and convert them to parameters. This acts as base texture. You will do the same for all your texture types. For me, my occlusion, metallic and roughness is one texture so I only need this one texture sample. From experimentation, I realize that R is occlusion, G and B is either metallic, specular or roughness. Anyway, another texture sample for normals too. Now you will need to give them an example texture for it to work. A base texture, another texture, and so on. For a minute, I do check on this middle sample and experiment again to see what gives the right final result. Now apply and save. Go back to the content browser and right click material and create instance. MI underscore Bonnie. We don't need to edit it as we already put Bonnie's textures as the example. Now, if you want, create an eye master material. This allows you to make specific adjustments to the eyes itself. If you don't want to make an eye material and just use the last method, that is fine. In this material, just add the eye texture. Create a base texture sample for your eye. Now you can add scalar parameters for metal, roughness, specular. We also want to use the emission value, simply just multiply from base texture by a scalar value. We can now adjust the brightness of the eyes. I don't have any masks, however I do have the base textures like the last method, I will be importing the eye normal. I didn't need that eye material, you can keep it if you want, but I am going to be deleting it. Instead, I will be creating a duplicate of that MI underscore Bonnie material and just rename it to MI underscore Bonnie eyes. In this material instance, just replace the example textures with their eye versions. For now, those are the eyes done. Now I have to do this similar method to the endoskeleton. I created a material instance and just gave the right materials needed. You don't have to copy one to one with materials, I am just showing quick examples of how I would manage my materials. Take your time and find what fits your materials and duplicate your own method. Now we can go to our model and implement these materials. Let's select the Bonnie material itself. It takes a bit of time to show. Now select the endoskeleton material. To see specific parts of the model to see where that material goes, there is a highlight and isolate checkbox that you can tick. Now we can see the endoskeleton. We also need to give the animatronic eyes. As you can see the material for the body seems a bit off. This gives a more harder looking material. I want to try get a softer material. We can go back to the material master and make some edits. The first edit, I want to make is allow the player to change the brightness of the texture. I want to merge the eye material I made earlier into this master material. Now test the eye material instance and you can see you can control emission. Now the second edit is this specular, roughness texture, switch around the RGB until you get the correct result. Apply and save to make sure the material updates. Now the materials are done, we want to now add these models to the actual game. We can use our data table to manage all this. Search for the table. 
In here, you have a section to select the model and the materials, so for Bonnie, I am going to select the model, the materials need to be in the right order as it is in the model viewer. Once the materials have been entered in, you can see the models have not updated yet. To fix this, you need to go to the animatronic blueprints class and just press the compile button again, check the game view again and it works, you can go back to the data table to adjust the size of this mesh and other changes. After scale changes, you should check if it spawns correctly, make sure it touches the ground and the spacing is alright, the setup for the model and materials are done. Take your time here to practice on other animatronics. Next, we will touch on the animation blueprint. We won't be dealing with actual animations, just play with transform modify node, right click and find animation blueprint. You will be welcomed by this screen. This is where you select a skeleton to use from that bottom section. Once you select the Bonnie skeleton, you can name it AB underscore Bonnie. In here, we have the anim graph. This is where we'll modify the bones. First, let's get the arms down. Search for transform modify bone. This node allows us to animate specific parts of the skeleton. On clicking it, you can select the bone you want to change. First one. I will do is the right shoulder. Next, we only want to focus on the rotation. We have a few options but choose add to existing so it doesn't replace another animation it does. The second option is the rotation space. We want to test out all of these to see which one works best. We can also disable the location and scale as we don't want to change those, there are checkboxes in the details panel for that. Now just link it up and compile. Now you can edit the bones to get it in the right area. Once that is done, we want to do the same for the left shoulder. Connect it, and then change the bone to left shoulder. Compile again so you can edit the bone rotation. Once the shoulders are in place, you are pretty much done. We have an additional feature which is head rotation to do now and we will add another transform modify for the head. This time drag off the rotation and promote it to a variable called head rotation. Now we need to go to our event graph, add a node called blueprint initialize animation, get a try get pawn owner and from here, you want to get pawn and cast to the master animatronic class, from that blue as BP return value, you want to drag from there and promote to variable, a reference to the animatronic class. We can now move on to creating the function that calculates the head rotation. In here, we can set our rotation variable and leave enough space for the maths. We want to get the pawn reference so we can get the actor's rotation. We then need to get the mesh of the actor and get the socket location. I just want to comment this as our start rotation. We then get the combine rotation, which is the same as a simple addition, so our B, is the head socket, so in our get socket location, give it the name of your head bone. You can go to your animatronic and check the bone, you can copy and paste that name. So right now we have a vector, we need to get a rotator type. One node we could use is a find look at rotation and connect the return value to B. Now we need a target, this is what the head will try to look at. Here is a quick diagram. The first half is if we were looking to the right to see Chica, it will look at us fine. However, it's not looking at our camera point of view. It's actually looking at our character mesh location. That also means if we're using the security cameras and we wanted to play one of those creepy moments, it would not look straight at us. It would continue to look at our character mesh back in the office. That is what the right half, it is the animatronic looking straight at us whatever view we are in, either player or security camera, it does not matter. In order to do this, we want to use get player camera manager which deals with the camera that you are looking through currently. Get player camera manager and then get the actor location of that, we may need to make a few adjustments, just connect it to the target, also connect the combine rotator to the head rotation variable, we are done with the function, we can now just do a simple test, in the begin play part, just add a delay and call the function and then connect it back up to the delay to loop it. We need to make sure that our AI has the anim blueprint, 
Now just test the game to see if it looks at us. And it does. However, if we play a bit and get to win Bonnie stands at our door. His head rotates the other way. Creepy but not what we were going for. So to fix this, we need to back to animation blueprint and delete the combine rotator. Instead break the rotator into floats. Same with the find look at rotation. Break that. We want to get from the Z of the look at rotation and subtract. The B is the break rotator. Now, we just need to make rotator. But connect it to the Z. Then connect the return value to the head rotation. As an optional feature if you ever want to reset the head rot, you could add a branch, the condition is an input. Create an input called reset rot. And on false, it does the normal calculation. On true, we can just set the head rotation back to zero. Now test it. See if it works well on normal security cameras, and when they reach the corridor. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, comment below, ask questions if stuck and consider subscribing. See you next time.